Hi there, my rubber hearts. Welcome back to another episode on All Things Rubber. I'm your host, Mari, and today we're diving into the controversial world of rubber bullets. Buckle up, because this one's going to be a real bouncer. Let's start at the beginning, shall we? Picture this. It's the early 1960s in Northern Ireland. The British forces are scratching their heads, trying to figure out how to control crowds without turning everything into a bloodbath. That's when someone had the bright idea. Hey, what if we made bullets, but not so kiddy? Now, my rubber hearts. This might sound like a joke, but it was a serious problem they were trying to solve. The concept of non-lethal projectiles for crowd control began to gain traction because, let's face it, nobody wants to use lethal force if they can avoid it. So, in 1964, the British Ministry of Defense rolled up their sleeves and got to work. The result? The first rubber bullets. And let me tell you, these weren't your average bouncy balls. These bad boys were 15 centimeters long and 38 millimeters in diameter. That's like firing a small banana at people. Can you imagine? But it wasn't until August of 1969 that these rubber monsters made their debut in Northern Ireland during the Troubles. The British army thought they'd found the perfect solution for crowd control. They were like, look at us being all humane and stuff. But spoiler alert, it wasn't as perfect as they hoped. Now, my rubber hearts. Let's fast forward to the 1970s. Bell bottoms were in, disco was king, and rubber bullets were, well, causing some serious problems. People quickly realized that these non-lethal projectiles were packing quite a punch. We're talking fractures, and in some horrible cases, even fatalities. It turns out that firing hard rubber projectiles at high speeds can do some real damage. Who would have thought, right? So, in 1973, they went back to the drawing board and came up with a plastic bullet, or baton round. Made from PVC, these were supposed to be less lethal. But let's be real, getting hit by anything at high speed isn't exactly a walk in the park. The 1980s saw even more changes. While the rest of us were rocking big hair and neon everything, scientists and engineers were working overtime to make these bullets safer. They started using softer rubber and tweaking the shape. It was like a weird, potentially dangerous version of Play-Doh experimentation. These newer bullets were designed to be more stable and predictable. The idea was to create something that would hurt enough to deter people from rioting, but not so much that it would cause lasting damage. It's a fine line to walk, and honestly, it's debatable whether they've ever really got it right. By the 1990s, rubber bullets were spreading faster than gossip in a small town. Law enforcement around the world started using them for everything, from riot control to managing rowdy concert crowds. But it wasn't all rock and roll, my rubber hearts. In 1994, during the apartheid era in South Africa, these bullets became a symbol of oppression. They were used extensively by police forces, often in ways that were criticized for causing unnecessary injuries. It's a stark reminder that even non-lethal weapons can be misused with serious consequences. Now, my rubber hearts, we need to talk about the serious stuff. Despite all of the improvements over the years, rubber bullets can still cause severe injuries. They're meant to be painful, but not lethal. However, when used incorrectly or at close range, they can be extremely dangerous. The thing is, these projectiles are designed to deliver a painful impact to deter people from aggressive actions. But the human body is complex, and what might be just a bruise on, for one person could be serious injury for another. It's like playing a very risky game of chance, and unfortunately, sometimes, people lose more than they bargain for. Now let's get a bit technical for a moment. Today's rubber bullets aren't just simple rubber. We've got a whole buffet of ouch to choose from. There's rubber coated steel, foam bullets and even sponge rounds. It's like the weapon industry decided to raid a craft store. It's like the weapons industry decided to raid a craft store. These modern variants use all sorts of materials, softer rubber compounds, plastic composites, even foam. 
The goal is to spread the force over a larger area to minimize injury. It's like the difference between being hit with a ping pong ball versus a golf ball. Both might hurt, but one's definitely going to leave a bigger mark. But here is the kicker, my rubber hearts. Despite all these advancements, there's still no guarantee of safety. These projectiles are typically fired from specially designed launcher or even modified shotguns. They travel at high speeds and can cause significant blunt trauma. We're talking bruises, broken bones, and in some worst cases, injuries to vital organs or even death. So you might be wondering, Mari, if those things are so dangerous, why do we still use them? Well, my rubber hearts, that's where things get complicated. The idea behind rubber bullets is to provide law enforcement with a way to control dangerous situations without resorting to lethal force. In theory, it's about minimizing casualties and maintaining order in chaotic situations. It's a tool that's supposed to sit somewhere between shouting, please stop, and using regular firearms. But here's the thing, the effectiveness and safety of rubber bullets depend heavily on how they're used. Firing them at close range or aiming at vulnerable areas like the head or chest can turn these less lethal weapons into potentially deadly ones. It's like giving someone a car and saying, here, this is safer than a rocket, but please don't crash it. Now, let's talk about the ethical side of things, because boy oh boy, it's a doozy. The use of rubber bullets is governed by strict rules of engagement and is supposed to comply with international human rights standards. But as we've seen time and time again, rules on paper don't always translate perfectly into a real world situation. There's an ongoing debate about whether the risk associated with rubber bullets overweigh their benefits. On one hand, they provide an option that's less likely to cause fatalities than traditional firearms. On the other hand, their misuse can lead to serious injuries and, in some cases, escalate tensions rather than defuse them. It's a classic case of with great power comes great responsibility. Except, in this case, it's more like with slightly less little power comes a whole lot of ethical questions. So there you have it, my rubber hearts. The bouncy, controversial history of rubber bullets. From their inception in the 1960s to the complex, multi-material projectiles of today, they've been a source of both innovation and controversy. They were invented with good intentions to provide the less lethal option for controlling dangerous situations. But as we've seen, the road to safer crowd control method is paved with unintended consequences and ongoing ethical debates. As technology continues to advance, so too do these projectiles. Researchers and engineers are constantly working on new designs and materials to make them safer and more effective. But the fundamental question remains, is there ever truly a safe way to shoot projectiles at people? It's a complex issue without an easy answer. Law enforcement needs tools to maintain order in chaotic situations, but those tools need to be used with responsibility and full awareness of their potential consequences. So my rubber hearts. What do you think? Are rubber bullets a necessary evil in modern law enforcement or is it time to bounce them off our arsenal? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and remember, whether you're talking about rubber bullets or any controversial topic, it's important to approach these discussions with empathy, understanding and the willingness to listen to different perspectives. After all, that's how we grow and make progress as a society. Don't forget to bounce the like button, share and subscribe and ring that notification bell to stay up to date with all our, our future episodes. Until next time, this is Mari signing off. Stay safe, stay informed and stay robbery.